So the big question is this. How do you take $42,000 in assets in a one Trackman Bay facility in the back of a CrossFit gym and turn it into a 12 bay, 17,000 square foot training facility in just a few years? That's the question, and this is the podcast that's going to give you the answer. Welcome to Inside the Room on Stock Shot Secrets. All right, everybody, we are here for another episode of Stock Shot Secrets Inside the Room, and you guys are in for quite a treat. This is Dominic, and Dominic is the man behind the screen (laughs) that basically all of you guys have a relationship with Dominic, and you don't even... You have no idea. (laughs) You have no idea. (laughs) So Dominic is my business partner at the Golf Room Everywhere, so all of these Stock Shot Secrets, Stock Shot Shows, Stock Shot (laughs) Setters, Stock Shot Funnels... Emails, text messages, communities, clubs, forums, <laughs> you name it. And this is the man behind yeah, it. So, Dom, me. thanks so much for being here, bro. Yeah, How are man. you? Thanks for having me. I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm uh, another day in Stock Shot World <laughs> and Stock Shot Nation. So, here we are. So, um, yep. I want to hear, I think everyone, because when we're talking about this, and we even talked about this yesterday, with where what, what, what we were doing to basically, in all essence, like transfer form the world of golf Mm -hmm. and transform lessons and the lesson gap and like consistency and systematic approaches. But like your story and my story are different stories Yeah, and you probably are coming from the aisle that everyone is sitting on. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been on that side, but like, how did this journey, this relationship, which now (laughs) is like two best buddies, like going through this together. How did this thing start? Yeah. So, I mean, going back to, I mean, end of high school for me, when I wasn't, I I wasn't like very good at golf going into high school and into college. Like I was okay. Like in freshman year of high school, I would shoot like 100, 90. Like I yeah. had to like figure out how to play golf and like shoot. When did the you scores. start? Because golf wasn't your first thing, right? No, no. So I started playing hockey, and I was like, <laughs> this is so funny because um, I was just talking about this the other day. I uh, I was in ninth grade, and my dad came up to me and was like, hey, you need to go out for this golf team like at Thomas Worthington High School. Like, You just need to go out and just see what happens. I'm like, Dad, no, I'm not. I'm a hockey player. Like, Those guys there's are no sissies. way I'm not playing sissies. golf. Like, I'm not a golf nerd. Like, All the ladies love hockey, man. <laughs> and so I'm like, you know, actually, my dad's yeah. actually like kind of right. <laughs> so he, he like forced me out there, and I was like, okay, whatever. So I go out and shoot. Like, It was a nine-hole just tryout or yeah. whatever. And I go out and shoot like a 60 or something on nine holes. It was Sick. terrible. And we get the email. We were sitting back down. I'm like, I clearly clearly didn't make the team, like obviously. Yep. And get the email that night. And my dad's like, hey, uh, by the way, everyone makes the team. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, tricked you. Shoot. Well, it actually worked out though, because while I was playing, I even though I shot 60, I had like those two shots that like hooked me in. And then yeah. I was just like married to the game. And it only right? takes one, right? It it's only like one takes... shot where the ball melts on the face like... and you're like, oh my gosh, I love this. Yeah, one shot. I had a couple of those during the course of my 60 strokes. And there was plenty of strokes for it to happen yeah, for. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> More opportunities. Yeah. So now you're so now you're playing high school golf. Yep. You get good, right? Good enough yeah. to go play college golf. Yeah, I, I kind of, well, I get to the point of like shooting around 80 to 85 a lot. Yeah. And it, it got really hard at that point. That's, that's where my, like my game kind of plagued. And I was like, what is going on? Like, why am I not getting better? I would go get, um, I would go get YouTube tips. I would go to in-person lessons. I would go to, you know, I get all these things like new clubs and like, I would try everything and it just, nothing would work. Maybe I'd shoot like 78, but I'd follow it up with like a 92 or whatever. Yeah. So it wasn't consistent. And, um, so yeah, I mean, I finally, um, it was, it kind of goes into kind of meeting you and like you were then becoming my instructor, but which when, 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 when was the first, we should probably, we could open up. I know we could, (laughs) we could open up coach now and see when was your first lesson. Yeah. I don't know when that was. I want to say it was like 2017, 16 or 17. I think that was like, let's see, Dom Caminiti. (laughs) Man, let's see. Scroll back. Look at all these posts you have. That's a lot of guy. What are you getting better? Yeah. September 20th, 2017. 17. So, yeah. So, that's, I'm at the, I'm one year in. Yeah. Right. So, I'm still kind of figuring this thing (laughs) out, too. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And that's, that's where, there it is. is. Look at that. Giddy up. Dominic (laughs) Caminiti. That hang, hang, hang. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, now, so we started in 2017. Um, Mm -hmm. and you're as the student, so you're on the other side of the aisle. Yeah, I'm on the complete other side of this thing, and I'm like, you know what, this is where I'm at, like, this is, I'm, I 
I can break 80 like sometimes, but I'm never, I'm, I'm not getting close to like breaking par or anything like that at that point. Yeah. And, um, it, it got to the point where I was, I came to you and I was like, this is what's happening. And I just, and it was funny because before I actually went to that lesson with you, that first one, um, I had watched you on YouTube and it was, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this guy's 20 minutes away from my house. Like, what? Like this yeah. guy on YouTube and you know, you see guys on YouTube, you're like, oh my gosh. And yeah. then you go see him in person. It's like, you're all like, he's fan, just super as short fanboy. as he, he's just as short as he <laughs> yeah. is on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, and I watched this YouTube video of like you talking about this stock shot. And I was like, I need a stock shot because I hit shots that go everywhere. Right. Like, I don't know where my golf ball is going. Yep. So, you know, I, I saw the YouTube video. I'm like, I need to book a lesson. <laughs> um, and But I don't have any money. And at the time, I think you were three or 400 bucks an hour or whatever you were. Yep. And, um, and I was like, you know, working some jobs here and there, and I would like take the money. I'd work for my jobs. I'm like, <laughs> just help me, please. <laughs> like, I just want to break eighty, like consistently, please. <laughs> right, right. So, um, and that's where it all started, and and ever since, understanding. And you had mentioned the, you had mentioned that. the other day too that like, the big aside from saying, hey, I want to have consistency. Yeah. You and me were the same of like, I would sit with my lessons from Bender and mm -hmm. I mean, and my videos. And I mean, I took so many videos of on V1 when I was a player and in college golf and high school golf. And our, our journey is kind of working in as, a, as of a teenage golfer. We're actually very, very similar. But, mm -hmm. you know, the, the whole idea of like steep, shallow, steep, there was like an epiphany moment for you or it was like, oh, yeah. Hundred percent. Well, yeah. it wasn't. It well, I guess was, we should probably say what is steep shallow. Steep? Right. So this whole idea of building this stock shot, right? And I learned this this concept. And when that first lesson, you explained to me what actually, like how you actually hit a stock shot, and it was through this framework called steep shallow steep. And I was like, and I don't even say know. What? It was like, <laughs> what does that even mean? And so you like you bring me back to the thing. It's like okay, you know, all these different professionals are going through. Like Tiger Woods is like swinging back in his backswing steep. And like Meaning the the shaft will point inside the golf ball, right? Halfway back, and then in coming down, the the shaft would point outside the golf ball, you know, in transition. Right. So and then through the ball as well. So like that's kind of a little automatic thing. Yeah, but yeah. <clears throat> then you would you overlaid my swing next to Tiger's <laughs> and all these pros, and I'm like, I, don't I go that. the opposite. <laughs> I go shallow, steep, shallow, and I'm like, well, shoot. I just told we had a guy who was, who had just started at the golf room, and he was upstairs right before I left to come down here. And his name is Dan, and I was like, he just started two days ago. Older guy, about 55, I think, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, 60. Um, I haven't had my time to spend with him yet because he just started. But he was making a swing, and it like it was like super inside, yep. over the top, flipped. I was like, listen, man, the beauty is we're going to spend some time together, 30, 30 minutes together just to know. But like what you do, it's great because you're here, and everyone who's going to walk through the door, they're you. Because yeah. what you do and what you did, yep. it's literally the common cold. And there's nothing worse. Yeah. You know what's super scary? Going to the doctor's office and you go, they go, what disease do you have? And they go, the doctor goes, you got, you got the shallow, steep shallows. And they're like, <laughs> and the doctor goes, I've never seen that before. <laughs> right? <laughs> we don't know how to fix it. But the nice right. part is, is when you go shallow, steep, shallow, which is what everyone does. Everyone. Like literally everyone. While there's different swings, pretty much most people are the same. Yeah, I think, right. It's um, like the common cold, and the doctor's yeah. like, "Yeah, I know it sounds complex, but literally, I've done this a thousand times. I could literally do it in my sleep." Whereas, like, it's like a heart surgeon, like, "Oh my gosh, you yeah. do open heart surgery." It's like, "Yeah, yeah." Like I play like ACDC while <laughs> right. I'm working on your heart. Like it's not a big deal. Like <laughs> stop freaking out, right? So it seems like it's unfixable, but it's right, like right. for us. And now, now you way down the line, right? Or for right, me, right. it's kind of like, "Yeah, this is just like a walk in the park." <laughs> yeah. For sure. And we, I think Kyle and I have seen more swings go shallow, steep, shallow than anyone on this planet. Maybe Mike Bender as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So now, so now we're, we're working as we're working with a, with a student or working with you. Right. Yeah. Um, what was your first, if you can go, date back, what was your first feeling or experience with feedback? Yeah, so it was wild. Like, <laughs> like no, like it was crazy because your um, first hone the cone. <laughs> I bet you we could the, find a hone the, the cone. The uh, the first years. drill that you had me do was the anti lift pull, yeah. and before I did it, you go, "You're going to hit the best shots of your life," and I'm like, "All right, man, let's do it." Like, what are we You're waiting on. for? Like, uh, I'll show you. Right. And uh, so you put it there, and I started swinging, and like it was like probably ninety eight percent like perfect. Yeah. But it was still like under the noodle. 
And it was like, I hit the first shot I remember and it was like, this is completely different. And yeah. the, the thing that was different was I didn't have to think about where my right arm was and all yeah. these different things. It was just like swing under the noodle. Yeah. Whereas in past lessons, it was like, you know, 26 different things on 26, man. Yeah. Come on. 26. It was like 55. <laughs> <laughs> right, because we would both we had we had yeah. we had, we shared an instructor at one time where you would get some notes and it was like double sided note cards, yeah. fight size two font, double sided, and it's like, and I remember being like, hey, I remember asking like, do people do do pros think like this? Is this what is this what Tigers I, thinking yeah. about over the shot? And he goes, absolutely. I'm like, wow, okay. Whereas to your point. You know, I actually, and I, I know that I haven't told you this, but I always say to you and I, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I could teach a lesson with no talking. With word, and no words. Last week I taught, I taught Kevin Hall, who's mm -hmm. deaf. Yeah, yeah. And I taught a lesson <laughs> yeah, and yeah. we can't talk. Right. And he striped it and his swing changed and right. no words. Yep. Right. So it's like, just, I would just kind of like be like, point to the noodle and just go. <laughs> and, Kevin, <laughs> and Kevin and I, Kevin and I traveled together. So like we're good yeah, yeah, buddies yeah. when we played, but. Um, that's the beauty of it. Like yeah. it's, it's training proper swings to get a proper feeling, which is the complete opposite yep. of everything else that's out there. hundred percent. Yeah. That was the first moment where I was like, this is completely different. Yeah. Right. Cause I, I could make a swing without thinking about 700 different things. Yeah. So now, so now we fast forward. So now it's, we're doing this, we're doing this thing. We're work, working life, yada, yada, yada. We're kind of working together. Um, you have a. We don't need to go into the short stint where you go. I think I'm going to go play professional golf. There, right. that, there that was a couple of weeks, right? <laughs> so here you go from a guy who can barely break eighty going to college. We start building stock shots. Well, yeah. Now you're thinking like, uh, I think I can go play professional well, like, golf. After like eighteen months of working on this thing, I'm like, I'm literally hitting stock shots. Yeah. And during that course of that time, I just want to tell like some of the viewers like that are listening. Um, over the course of that time, I went through some periods where I would go and practice on my own, yeah. right? And this is some of the things that, you know, we've changed and even what we do now yeah. is that when I would, um, you know, send something to, I would go and practice and use the feedback and it would say I had like an hour to practice, right? Yeah. I would only go and spend 10 to 15 minutes with the feedback and then just like feel it, quote unquote, feel it the rest of the time. Yeah, right. And I was struggling, right? Like, even though I had the feedback and everything, which was doing, it was doing a lot better. Like everything was better, but I didn't understand to truly swing steep, shallow, steep to build this stock shot. I needed to, at the time, really focus on the feedback for like 90, 95% of my practice time. And that's, right. and I didn't, under, I didn't get that until I texted you, which is going into like some of the other stuff we'll probably talk about is when I texted you and was like, Hey, am I doing it right? And like, how much time should I be spending in this thing? Right. But if I would have never had access to you, I would have just probably done the feedback And that was the hard minutes. part, like for me as a player, was that when I would go play golf, or not go play golf, when I would take lessons back, you know, when I was like 17, 18, 19, well, 10, 11, 12, 13, blah, yeah. blah, blah, until I met Bender, mm -hmm. it would, I would take lessons and they would tell me, and then I would go hit balls the next day and I'm like, I feel like I'm doing the same thing. I'm doing everything on the three by five <laughs> note card, <laughs> yeah. but wow, I would look yeah. on camera and I'd go, this looks no different. It looks like trash, <laughs> yeah. right? And like, I thought I, it looked better in the, like in the lesson, but right. now I'm doing the same thing, mm -hmm. but it doesn't look the same. And I was like, that's where I was like on my side, I was like, you know, because I had had that story of Tiger Woods when I was younger, where he always was like, okay, first I understand what I need to do, right. then it looks better, then it feels better, then it performs better, then I can do a practice, then on the course, then in tournament. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I understand what I need to do, but it still looks bad. Right, right. So that's where for you is like this whole idea of the, the feedback part, right? Yeah, for sure. Of like doing that. So now you've got the feedback part, but... What was, you were saying something about in regards to the texting part. Yeah. So the the one thing that um, mm -hmm. that made it to where I wasn't struggling anymore with like going and practice on my own because like yeah. I would leave the lesson and at the time your lessons are completely different now but at the time the lessons were just you know lesson like one on one off yeah. lessons yeah right so um, and com completely transformed now obviously but um, to to answer if you weren't available for texting. Um, or just questions at all, yeah. then I would have been forced to book another lesson. Yeah, and that that was the thing that was – so with me, like I had um, – the first guy that I remember getting a lesson with, his name was – well, not the first guy. I got a lesson with a gentleman named Mark Wood, and Mark yeah. Wood actually – I think he has a podcast in Colorado, but he was in Jersey. And I remember going to see Mark, and like he was the first coach that I ever had where I had like – 
an ant like he would hang out and I like could text some questions and but like he still wouldn't get back to me and then and then when I met Bender mm -hmm. and here's like Mike like the godfather of golf yeah. you know legends of golf and he's so busy working with tour players and I would text him the videos just like you right and it wasn't even so much I fell in love with Mike for who Mike was but I fell in love with Mike because of the fact that like he genuinely cared and he would yeah. get back to me mm -hmm. so like I would be sitting in Argentina and have a bad first round and like yeah. he would get back to me or right. even if it was a pra like my day of practice in Scottsdale mm -hmm. and that's so invaluable like I literally just gave a lesson to a really really good junior golfer she's 10 years old 11 years old and she comes in and she's normally really really good and her club face is so shut at I mean Dom her face <laughs> I'm not I kind of do it like her her the fist is square yeah. her face is like this yeah yeah, yeah. And her, her, she shut and redic her swing direction is minus nine. Ooh, mm -hmm. And I say to her dad, I go, listen, like, two things. First, if she was filming her swing, yeah, because she's gotten a lot of lessons. She can see this. Even though she's 11, like, our 11-year-olds can teach better lessons than probably 80% of the city. Mm -hmm. So, because they're very smart because they understand it, I go, but if she was, if she had constant contact and you guys would send me a video, right. we would have beat this the day it popped up. Right. Right, 100%. so there's so much value in like being able to communicate with a coach yeah. to say, "Am I doing this right or wrong?" And it's mm -hmm. even just like one video, like, oh, "Am I yeah. on the right track?" It doesn't have to be anything crazy. It just has you just have to have that that confirmation that what you're doing alone is proper, right? Because your mind will be like, "I don't know, this feels weird." Like, change is weird, so weird. So, so weird. Like for but me, you, this, almost, you, you pay for change. Like oh, I always 100%. make the joke, like. The more it feels weird, yeah. the more expensive it is. Yeah, for sure. For sure. When <laughs> when I'm in my net at my house, sometimes now I'll even be like, is this right? So that, like, <laughs> I've written a certification program. <laughs> I was, literally built this whole thing. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. is this, this feels crazy. And then right. I look at the video and it's like, it's right. Right. Which is why Tiger says it has to, you have to look, you have to understand and look. And for me, and I think that this is what we've come together with it is that like, mm -hmm. There's so many amateur golfers, which is why it breaks our heart and why what it, what our mission is, is that they just they don't have an understanding of like what is first. Yeah. Hey, guys, I hope you are enjoying this episode of the Stock Shot Secrets podcast. If you are enjoying it, be sure to like this episode. Be sure to subscribe so you can always see when they're coming out. And most importantly, if you would be so kind to be able to share this podcast with other passionate golfers who are trying to get better and build stock shots because it grows through you sharing it. Thank you so much for tuning in. And now back to Stock Shot Secrets, right? Like, is it alignment? Is it flipping? Is it early extension? Is it like a flying elbow for you at the top, yeah. right? Is it like, what are all, <laughs> it's not to bring up yeah. <laughs> your heart's pretty faster, <laughs> but it's, it's like, what is the, what is the thing? And then having a way to actually make it look better Right. To where then, as you continue to do it, and the only way that it starts to feel better, like mm -hmm. Tiger, yeah. is that's where when you had the epiphany of like, it's not 10 minutes. Yeah. It's 90 minutes of the 100 minutes. Right. 100%. And then it starts to feel better. And now you can start to like own the pattern because now you've done it so much right. that for you, not to bring up, but the flying out, like the cross the line, yeah. that feels weird. Mm -hmm. And then the perfect one, that feels normal. But right. you have to do that so much yeah. and force the pattern that that, you know, not to get into the science of it, but like the myelin in your brain, the muscle yeah. memory overtakes the old one to right. where you're like, man, that felt ratchet and but then the yeah. good ones like that feels great and the the craziest thing is if you take some time off it always tries to mold back to I what know. It, it, to its original clay and it's like I our just, stuff is our stuff it's 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 our stuff like i will always take it a little bit inside and cut a little bit across the line and like come yeah. down a little steep yeah. and like early extend a little bit like same thing with your stuff it's yeah. it's everyone has their their stuff but i think um the other thing that we didn't really mention that you kind of mentioned the systematic approach of it is i was actually the other day looking at some of my old videos from the same instructor that we we kind of worked with back in the day and um it was crazy because i was looking at the videos and knowing what i know now right after our lessons and everything and what we've done um i was my swing looked pretty darn good like let's be honest but i was aimed 40 yards right <laughs> and i'm like Oh my gosh, like I spent so much time I know. doing the wrong thing and even like going back to like texting and like all of that stuff. So even outside of the feedback and the, you know, all of that stuff's important, but also the systematic approach of it, like all of the people that are listening right now, if they flip, it's not because they flip. 
Right. Right. It's because they come down, you know, steep. Yeah, they yeah. early extend, they come down yeah. steep. It's and they, like, good it's thing all you stuff. do flip because if you didn't, right. you'd really suck. Yeah. I had a guy yesterday in the Stock Shot Club who um, who wanted to keep his right foot on the ground so he wouldn't flip as much through impact. <laughs> And I'm like, I know for a fact. Well, I haven't even looked at this guy's swing. Yeah, great guy, really super nice guy. Talked to him a lot, and he uh, he <laughs> he didn't need to keep his right foot down. He didn't need to fix his flip. It was all in his backswing. His hands were way too high, and all yeah. this stuff. And it was like this poor guy. I know. Just, I mean, how many hours do you think? I know how many hours do you? I know how many it was for me. Do you think you wasted on the range hitting no. balls? So many. And that's what's so sad about it, right? And that's where I think our heart is all the stuff is that, like, I mean, I hit so many balls at the age of, like, 13, 14, 15, 16, yeah. 17, 18, 19, 20, yeah. 21, 22, it's crazy. nine, 10 hour days as a professional until I basically had my epiphany moment where it's like, oh, this is the order in which it goes. Right. And these are the smoke and this and the fire. And you're still always learning and all right. this stuff. But I mean, it always, it's like when I walk the range at our club to get ready to go do playing lessons, I see these guys. And it it sucks because they've taken time off of work. Like right. they're away from their families and they're having a great time and they're hitting yeah. balls, but I'm just, and they're they're genuinely passionate about getting better. Right. And they're hitting balls. I'm just like, you literally should stop. Yeah. Like I told the girl that I just saw this morning that I had the lesson. I go, if you see that number on your track man, because she's blessed enough to have a track man in her house. Oh, must be nice. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I go, if you see that, just stop. Right. Like, right. Scream at the top of your lungs, freak out right. because you can't store that myelin. Yeah, and there's just so many players that are hitting balls, aiming right, like faces open. It's just like you can MacGyver it yeah. to go straight. The, the brain and the hands are really powerful, mm -hmm. but like there's just it, it's creating a systematic way of doing 100%, it. Hundred percent. Yeah. One of the the one of my favorite types of clients to get in into our system is somebody who hasn't spent any time practicing. Because we are literally going to save them if they were to go do it on their own. Yeah. We're going to save them like seven years or more. Right. Trying to like trial and error and everything. It's yeah. like, no, you're, this is, the, you just literally have to like follow the steps and we yeah. will take so much time off of your. I had a junior golfer in the other day and he was like, I go, How much, how's your practice going this summer? He goes, pretty good. I go, what have you been doing? He goes, I'm hitting balls like four or five hours a day. I'm like, you're not practicing. <laughs> no. He's like, he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, if you were, or if you are authentically practicing, like practicing with purpose, with feedback loops mm -hmm. is so intentional and it's so mentally draining. You basically have about an hour. Yeah. And then you are mentally spent. You're done. So it's the whole idea of like, if you don't have time to practice, which is basically everyone. Right. Um, and everyone seems, I'm always baffled that players are like, yeah, I play 36 holes a day and practice three days a week. I'm like, goodness, like, who is your wife? <laughs> do you have kids? I, what, I just talked to a guy on the way up here coming in for experience. I go, how much do you play? What is this? He goes, he goes, I play four times a week and practice three days a week. I go, oh, oh, what, what business do you own? He goes, no, I'm not a surgeon. I'm like, what? I need your job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, I'm lucky if I play nine holes a day and I hit know. balls three days yeah, a week but yeah. the whole point is if you're doing that you're maximizing time so so now we're going through the journey yep. you kind of have like you've got the, the noodle like over your shoulder you're learning you're learning this stuff um and it's kind of good just to tell the origin story of tgre right so now yeah yeah you call me i remember sitting in my <laughs> closet and i'm folding clothes so yeah and you go you should really start an online thing and i'm like what <laughs> you're like yeah yeah i started shooting videos <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, yeah. So, so back, tell us, tell to us back about, up a little. <laughs> tell us about your original entrepreneurial uh, story yeah. of starting, right. of, of being a golf instructor. So <laughs> I felt complete. So you built your stock shot. Yeah. You got your feedback. So, you yeah. think about going on tour. Now you're like, I think I'm going to teach I the world. I got to the point where I was like, okay, now I'm, I got my stock shot. Like I'm, I'm really playing a lot better golf, right? My handicap's down. I've done, I've done all of the things. I've achieved all of like, won my club championship, won some college tournaments, like all of this stuff, which was great. Like I wanted to do that. And then I'm like, yeah, you get to that point where like I could maybe like maybe if I have good days every day I could right. go pro maybe probably not right so and then I'm like so that's probably out of the picture and like all that vision stuff was like really cool to me because like obviously my girlfriend at the time my wife now Claudia she like the life that we could have lived like on tour and like traveled the world like that was like oh my gosh that was amazing but like unfortunately Dom you know doesn't shoot the scores. So <laughs> that's just what it is. Right. Um, so the second thing, while I was like going through this process of building my swing and you know getting lessons and everything, I was in college and um, 
it was toward the end of college, and I was like, what am I going to do with my, with my life? <laughs> like the because, most questions that 23-year-olds yeah, ask. At, um, as an entrepreneur, like, I didn't really want to um, just go and work for, like, a bank or something like that. Yeah. I was like, I, 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 I have a very obsessive personality, so, like, if you gave me, like, a swing tip right now, I'd be, like, up all night trying it out. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Which but, is why the golf room grows at 100 miles an hour. Yeah. So, um, so basically what happened was I was going through, you know, all of this stuff and I was, I started my own. I was like, I don't want to get a job. I don't want to like, I want to build something. Yeah. Right. And I, I had curated all of this knowledge from getting lessons with you, all of this stuff that previous before that. And I was like, maybe just maybe I could learn how to like sell, you know, my knowledge online and like help people like that are, that had the same exact struggles as I did. Right. Right. So I, <laughs> I basically took, um, <laughs> <laughs> nicely i took your stuff <laughs> the first video was how to build a stock shot and i was like at this local driving range i took this little camcorder out and i go and on the range <laughs> the guy that was owned the, the it was westerville golf or golf center or whatever he comes out to me he's like hey man like what are you doing and i'm like i'm just filming some videos for stuff <laughs> i'm out in like the middle of the range basically yeah. and uh, so i put it all together and um, I think one of the, I, I did call you and I remember that, that day and was like, you could build this online thing. I got to show you about it or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and it was actually, um, I remember this very specifically. <laughs> I had a lesson booked with you and, um, I, I show up to the lesson. I don't know if you remember this, but I show up to the lesson. I'm like, Hey man, like, I don't really want a lesson today. Like, I want to talk to you about this, this thing. And you're like, whatever, man, like as long as you pay me, he's yeah, like, yeah. I don't know if you yeah, actually paid you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so we sat down I'm like, look at, look at what I built. Like we could do this for, for what you're doing and take it out to the, the masses and, and everything. I remember like, I go, I go, wait, wait, you've shot something and you go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I go, how many people have bought? And I think you, what was it? You're like, I think you said like a hundred like people. I hundred or something. I was, I, was like, like, I was like, you've never even taught a lesson. <laughs> no, never taught a lesson or anything. It was just like this guy who got all this stuff and just did the thing and then tried to bring it out to people. I was like, not a professional golfer, not a professional teacher or anything. Yeah, so that, that conversation was, I believe, in like late 2019, yeah, early 2020. Or, yeah, yeah. Which basically then, at that moment, COVID hits. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, divine intervention, TGRE launches at the perfect time, which is kind of probably it's a different podcast for a different time of my my story of like taking this thing online with like my first online lesson with Scott Swid. Right, and like, right. oh, my gosh, FaceTime lessons are a thing and remote yeah. lessons are a thing, like all this stuff. And now it's morphed into this massive, massive yeah. thing um, and taking the core beliefs of like what we had of feedback Hundred percent and constant contact. Constant contact. Systematic approach was a, uh, obviously a big one. Like the first program we we created was the master plan, and it was, you know, I learned more just watching you shoot that program than I mean I don't want to say then the lessons, but I learned a lot during yeah. the watching you shoot just just the program because it was yeah. like, you know, not only did I get to watch you shoot it live, but I also <laughs> got to go through every single video like a hundred times. Right. So um, it was really cool for Dom's me. Don's watched more <laughs> Kyle. Unfortunately, my voice is in his brain. <laughs> He's watched more Kyle Morris videos yeah. in, in than anybody on planet Earth. Yeah, and at so. the time, I think that when we first started, we we had a lot of the core values, but a lot of them have morphed and, and evolved too. Yeah. So we had the we had. The I think feedback. we figure we not figure it was always in there, but we like you yeah. know there has been wisdom that has been gained through this thing of of what players really need and yeah. really listening to the customer of like this is what we, you act this is the truth right. And that's, you know, we're almost like um, we're a different voice than probably what's used to being said because it's like, no, 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 no. There actually isn't a silver bullet. No. There's just a bunch of golden BBs. But, right. like, this is the order in which you have to shoot the BBs. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, so with all of that said, right, like you've been in, you're in, you've, you know, you've helped me, like, and we've done it together in building Stock Shot Club. I guess first, what is Stock Shot Club? Yeah, so Stock Shot Club, I mean, where it really came from was um, providing, honestly, providing a, a service out to the masses and being able to make it affordable, but also providing golfers with the ability to literally do what I did with you in our lessons when I was in a student and what you did with Mike as a student. Yeah. And, you know, you don't just get a lesson, like just getting a lesson, like an in-person lesson then leaving and then having a question. It just doesn't work anymore. That is the old way of doing yeah. lessons. Nowadays, inside of our Stock Shot Club, 
you can have a coach walk beside you for, you know, a very 24 7. 24 7 for Literally, a very affordable like, rate. Way less money than, than a lesson. A to, lesson, yeah. To the point where you would spend a, spend, you know, I would take a lesson with a super famous instructor and it's 300 bucks an yeah. hour. And then I, you know, I got a lesson on a Monday and then Tuesday, like everyone, I go, I have a question. And then you try to text them and they're like, no, no response. No response. And then you send an email, no response. And then maybe you get them a few days later and they're like, yeah, like, sorry, that's a long answer. Like, um, can you just book another lesson? It's like, what? That's like another two weeks. Yeah. And like, $200. So and $200. It's yeah. $300. It's like, I'm broke. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, right. I can't do that. So that is where we have a very core belief that it is better for, like I just told the junior golfer, it is better for me to see your daughter 10 minutes a day, 100%. every day, than see her one hour every three or four weeks. Yeah. Like if you did this, she would not have her face would not have been closed and she would not be steep. I would have caught it the right. day it happened. I would have knocked it off. Yeah. And that's where there's so much value in you should the players. They need to be filming anyways, because I mean, don't take it from us. Like take it from Tiger. Like you understand. And then you make sure it looks better. You yeah. better make sure if you're practicing, you're actually practicing and it looks better. Yeah. So I have kind of the rule of thumb of like for every 15 to 20 swings you take should be one video. Oh, yeah. So at least. At least. So yeah. if you're f hitting 50 balls, which is probably a, that's a 30, 40 yeah. minute practice session. That's about, you know, two, three videos. Mm -hmm. And then you take those videos, you upstore it, you go send it to your coach at Stock yeah. Shot Club. Um, and then they're like, you know, here you go. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's ridiculously fast. Yeah. Right. And. We're building it to be insanely fast. That's oh, yeah. what our, the vision is, is where essentially you can be hitting balls on a range, mm -hmm. and that's ball five, and ball eight or nine or ten, yeah. you already know what you need to do to correct. Exactly, and the, the ultimate goal is to, and you guys will probably see this very pretty soon, I would say, is to click a button and then have a coach pop up. Yeah. Right? It's like, I don't have to wait. I don't have to book a lesson. I can get a coach no matter what time it is, yep. no matter what day it is. doesn't matter. Like. Yeah, I should be able to get Anytime a Anytime you're ever having to to make it to where you're getting a lesson and you look back at the coach and you go, did I do it? Yeah. That means you don't understand because right. you don't know what the video looks like. Now, you can look back at the video and say – or look back and go, I know I see it's wrong. I don't know how to fix it, but, mm -hmm. like, you know, what do you see? But that's where, like, the feedback ultimately fixes. Right. Right? So it's through these core beliefs that, like – you here, and obviously you've just been a godsend because it's it's been amazing to work beside you, with you, and and build this thing that really, in some sense, well, it's, and obviously we're biased because it's us, but I really feel like it's pioneering a, a different way of doing it. Right. That's completely outside the realm and, and using, leveraging technology, yeah. leveraging cool apps like Sportsbox AI mm -hmm. and, and Coach Nows and all these different video programs and frames per second and it being more clear. Yeah. Um, it's allowing us to really help players all over the world with what they need to do. So yeah, for sure. Um so thanks for being a part of the yeah, being, 100%. being an Likewise, yeah. It's just a great bro. <laughs> so it went from cones and noodles in September twentieth, two thousand seventeen to <laughs> Helping over fifty thousand golfers around the world build yeah, stock shots. It's amazing. So. It's good stuff. It's uh, and we're we're just getting started. So yeah, absolutely. All right, buddy. Thank you so All much right. for being here. Thank, Thank you. you guys, everybody, for tuning in to another episode of Stock Shot Secrets Inside the Room with my boy Dom Caminiti. And we'll see you guys back here for another episode. If you like this and you need someone who needs constant contact, feedback, a stock shot, consistency, systematic approaches, you name it, the actual formula to get better. Send this to a friend because. As a passionate golfer, he probably was the same as us 100%. and lost. So we'll see you guys back here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, thank you so much for listening to the latest episode of Stock Shot Secrets. I would love to invite you to Columbus to come see me and hang out with me and build a personalized plan for you and your game. If you would want more information about building your personalized plan and coming to Columbus and hanging out, just email us at info at thegolfroom.com and we will get back to you and set your visit for an epic red carpet experience at TGR in Columbus, Ohio.